The name Gorgon derives from the ancient Greek word Gorgos, which means grim, dreadful, and appears to come from the same root as the Sanskrit, Komagajana, which is defined as a guttural sound, similar to the growling of a beast. Gorgons were a popular image in Greek mythology, appearing in the earliest of written records of ancient Greek religious beliefs such as those of Homer, which may date to as early as 1194 to 1184 BC. Because of their legendary and powerful gaze that could turn one to stone, images of the Gorgons were put upon objects and buildings for protection. An image of a Gorgon holds the primary location at the pediment of the temple at Corfu, which is the oldest stone pediment in Greece, and is dated to 600 BC. Gorgons are often depicted as having wings, brazen claws, the tusks of boars, and scaly skin. The oldest oracles were said to be protected by serpents and a Gorgon image was often associated with those temples. Lionesses or sphinxes are frequently associated with the Gorgon as well. While seeking origins, some have suggested examination of some similarities to the Babylonian creature, Humbaba, in the Gilgamesh epic. Homer, the author of the oldest known work of European literature, speaks only of one Gorgon, whose head is represented in the Iliad as fixed in the center of the Aegis of Athena. In the Odyssey, the Gorgon is a monster of the underworld into which the earliest Greek deities were cast. The Attic tradition, reproduced in Euripides, Ion, regarded the Gorgon as a monster, produced by Gaia to aid her children, the Titans, against the new Olympian deities according to the Hesiod Theogony. The Gorgons were said to be the daughters of sea deities, Ceto the sea monster and Phorcys, her brother husband. They were Sethno, Uriel and Medusa. Medusa was the only one of the three Gorgons who was not immortal. Uriel is from the ancient Greek meaning broad, wide-stepping, wide-threshing, however her name may also mean of the wide briny sea. Medusa's name comes from the ancient Greek verb which is translated to protect. Their home is believed to be on the farthest side of the Western Ocean, according to later authorities, in Libya. Ancient Libya is identified as a possible source of the deity, Neith, who also was a creation deity in ancient Egypt and, when the Greeks occupied Egypt, they said that Neith was called Athene in Greece. Stories claim that each of three Gorgon sisters, Stheno, Uriel, and Medusa, had snakes for hair, and that they had the power to turn anyone who looked at them to stone. According to Ovid, Metamorphoses, a Roman poet writing in 8 AD, who was noted for accuracy regarding the Greek myths, Medusa alone had serpents in her hair, and he explained that this was due to Athena, Roman, Minerva, cursing her. Medusa had copulated with Poseidon, Roman, Neptune, in a temple of Athena after he was aroused by the golden color of Medusa's hair. Athena therefore changed the enticing golden locks into serpents. In Ovid's telling, Perseus deems Medusa's punishment as just and well earned. However, other versions of the tale say Athena, being the goddess of reason understands Medusa was an innocent victim and taking pity on Medusa, changed her into a terrible monster, along with her sisters Stheno and Uriel so that no god could ever harm them again. Gorgon are believed to be mythical monsters that killed and redeemed. Perseus used the Gorgon's head, Medusa, in a quest to defeat his enemies and rescue Andromeda and his mother Dean. Perseus was able to slay her while looking at the reflection from the mirrored shield he received from Athena. During that time, Medusa was pregnant by Poseidon. When Perseus beheaded her, Pegasus, a winged horse, and Creasa, a giant wielding a golden sword, sprang from her body. He is also said to have handed Medusa's head to Athena which she placed in her shield. In some Greek myths, blood taken from the right side of a gorgon could bring the dead back to life, yet blood taken from the left side was an instantly fatal poison. 
Athena gave a vial of the healing blood to Asclepius, which ultimately brought about his demise. Heracles is said to have obtained a lock of Medusa's hair, which possessed the same powers as the head, from Athena and to have given it to Sterope, the daughter of Cepheus, as a protection for the town of Tegea against attack. The Gorgon image appears in several pieces of art and architectural structures including the pediments of the Temple of Artemis, c. 580 BCE, in Corsia, Corfu the mid-6th century BCE, larger-than-life marble statue, that is now in the Archaeological Museum of Burroughs, and the celebrated cup by dowries. The Gorgon became a popular shield design in antiquity along with being an apotropaic, warding off evil, device. The goddess Athena and Zeus were often portrayed with a shield, or aegis, depicting the head of a Gorgon who is typically believed to be Medusa. There are also several archaeological examples of the Gorgon's face being used on breastplates, in mosaics and even as bronze end pieces on ship beams in the Roman period. Perhaps the most famous example of Medusa in art in antiquity was the Athena Parthenos statue from the Parthenon which was made by Phidias and described by Pausanias. This statue of Athena depicts a gorgon's face on the goddess breastplate. In Greek mythology there is, also, Hesiod's description of Hercules' shield which describes the events of Perseus and Medusa. In ancient Greece a gorgonian, a stone head, engraving, or drawing of a gorgon face, often with snakes protruding wildly and the tongue sticking out between her fangs, frequently was used as an apotropaic symbol and placed on doors, walls, floors, coins, shields, breastplates, and tombstones in the hopes of warding off evil. In this regard Gorgon are similar to the sometimes grotesque faces on Chinese soldiers' shields, also used generally as an amulet, a protection against the evil eye. Likewise, in Hindu mythology, Kali is often shown with a protruding tongue and snakes around her head. Medusa and her story today symbolizes quite a lot, from different perceptions. In Christian symbolism, Medusa represents the dreaded enemy and death, and thus becomes an embodiment of the devil. Nihilists interpret the tale of Medusa and attempt to avoid looking into her eyes, represent avoiding the ostensibly depressing reality that the universe is meaningless. Feminists envisage Medusa and her story as a symbol of female rage and protector of women's secrets.